NASCAR needs more of what Dale Jr. and JRM are doing right now. So if you follow the Xfinity series, you know that Dale Jr.'s team, JRM, is one of the top teams in the series, which is great. But what they're doing with their number 88 car is exactly what NASCAR needs. Yes, sure, we have tons of new drivers that come in every single year. They buy rides. They have the budget to go with it. They have sponsors. They have rich parents. They have that. But what they lack a lot of times is that raw, natural talent. And Dale Jr. is vehemently aware of that. His entire company is built off of that business model. Having kids, guys, anybody come in with a budget and they're able to buy that ride. Every one of his cars right now across all four of them are accounted for by drivers that bring a budget with them. AJ, Justin Allgaier brings Brant with him. Sammy Smith brings Pilot Flying J with him. Brandon Jones brings Menards and Ream. And then you have... Also, Sam Mayer, who brings a litany of sponsors, including his parents' company, as well as a couple other that have been attractive. But JRM does find sponsors for him. So, all four of their cars are accounted for by kids that bring a budget. Guys that bring a budget. I shouldn't call them kids. But what they're doing recently with the number 88 car, at least the last two weeks, and hopefully we see more of it into the future, is putting in guys from the Grassroots Series into that car. We saw Bubba Pollard at Richmond last weekend. We saw Carson Quapple this weekend at Martinsville. And of course... Dale Jr. famously made Josh Berry into a cup driver after finding him sponsors to run him full-time in the Xfinity Series, which then promoted him on to the Cup Series, replacing Kevin Harvick. What he's doing right now for the Xfinity Series is basically like what the refs do at the end of football games for the Chiefs. They help them get to victory, and that's what Dale's doing with all of his drivers right now, or at least these guys down in the Cars Tour in the Grassroots Series. Nobody was going to put Bubba Pollard into an Xfinity car, at least not a good Xfinity car. He, of course, has had offers before to get into an Xfinity car, but it wasn't one that was going to have race-winning speed. He got into one, and guess what? He had race-winning speed, or at least the speed to finish top three on debut, which is a massive accomplishment. What we saw him do was really, really good. Goes out and sets the fastest lap in practice. Great. Top of the world. Goes out and qualifies. 36. Not the, not the top of the world anymore. But then, just because he's a veteran. He's 37 years old. He's mature. He understands how this works. And he knows that you have to conserve your tires, that you have to be smooth throughout this 250 lap race. And he goes out there and manages to finish in the sixth position. He had a great strategy at the end. His crew chief called it. They were phenomenal. And he was there on speed. That's great to see. It proves that these grassroots guys can come up and get into a competitive car and be competitive. That is key. So then, flash forward to this weekend, we have Carson Quapple getting into the number 88 car. Again, another car store guy. Another, this time, a late model stock guy, two-time defending cars tour champion, the series that Dale Jr. owns, and we'll get to more of that in a second, goes out there and finishes P4 on debut in the Xfinity series in that number 88 car. Yes, sure, both of these guys debuted at short tracks, which is where they cut their teeth. Absolutely, that's where they should debut at. If you're good on a road course, you should probably debut on a road course unless you're cam waters and you're like i don't give a dang i'm gonna go out here and do whatever i want because i'm australian and he's a badass like that so he went out and made his cup or his nascar debut rather in the truck series race at martinsville which was hats off to him because that's a heck of a place to make your first ever nascar start but for these guys it makes sense to do that and for them to have speed for carson quaffle to be the second fastest jrm car at the end of the race finishing fourth that is huge having no experience in these cars going back to the cars tour the series that dale jr owns with jeff burton kevin harvick and justin marks what they're doing at the grassroots level is absolutely fantastic if you miss the race on saturday night connor zillich the track house um phenom that has gone out there and won the 24 hours of daytona the 12 hours of sebring uh mx5 races sat on the pole for the truck race at coda goes out and wins the cars tour on saturday night holding off brendan Butterbean Queen, I got tongue-tied there for a second, who will also be making his NASCAR debut at North Wilkesboro in the number one truck for Tricon Garage in the truck series. What Dale Jr. is doing with the Cars Tour is exactly what NASCAR needs. NASCAR needs more of these grassroots blue-collar guys to get opportunities to move up. Of course, it all comes down to budget. It all comes down to money. But that's why these Cup Series owners are fighting so hard to get the TV revenue distribution to be changed. That way, that the spon that way, the business model rather isn't so reliant on sponsorship, which is huge. Because imagine if they already had the budget because of the TV revenue, because of race purses, and they could just go put a driver in and then think about. Finding 
finding sponsorship later, kind of like what we used to do about 20-ish years ago, that would be massive because then you don't have to rely on these guys coming in with a budget that maybe don't have the talent, but they have the money. So you're like, well, to keep the team going, to keep everybody employed, we'll take this guy on knowing that we're probably not going to win races or if we do, it's going to be one or lucked into one. And rather, they'll be able to put a guy in that has raw talent and go out there and try to compete for wins, try to compete for championships, and not have to, like I said, rely on the drivers with the budget. And don't get me wrong, there's a ton of good drivers that do bring a budget. And that's no fault of their own. I mean, William Byron is a perfect example of a driver that does bring budget with him. Chase Elliott was a perfect example of a driver that brought budget with him. So you have guys that are very good and do bring budget. But what I'm saying is, most of the time, when you see these guys come up through the ranks, you see guys with talent start to peter out. Like, oh, we don't have enough money to move from the truck series to the Xfinity series. We don't have enough money to do a full-time you know, Xfinity series ride. And guys like Ryan Priest, who bet on themselves, right, goes out there and buys a couple races in a JGR car, wins a race, and then that propels him on to becoming a full-time NASCAR Cup Series driver. And we've seen a couple other people take chances on themselves as well. What Dale's doing is giving these guys a pipeline. He's doing more for grassroots racing right now than anybody else in terms of helping promote these guys up. And whether those guys want to move up or not is obviously up to them, but it's really good to see that happen. Of course, we know TRD funds a ton of grassroots racing, which hats off to them. I'm glad somebody's doing it because they need to. But when it comes to moving these guys up and giving them a chance, guys that didn't get into the TRD pipeline when they were 13 or whatever, or guys that maybe missed on the chance to get into a manufacturer pipeline, uh, maybe they're aged out of it or whatever, and they're taking a different path. He's giving them that extra opportunity, kind of like a GED almost, where you're like, okay, well, you missed out the first time. But like, let's see what you can do here. And they're doing it. And that's awesome. I think everybody loves to see that. So hopefully we get to see more of this. Hopefully we get to see Carson Quapple in additional races this year. Hopefully we get to see Bubba Pollard come back and make another start. Whether that be at Bristol in the fall or even at uh, Martinsville in the fall. Give me anything because I want to see that guy go out there and see what he can do again. Same with Carson Quapple. Obviously, when he finished second on debut last year in the Arca Series, you were like, okay, at Kansas, a track that he's never been to on a the biggest track he's ever been to, you're like, okay, kid's got talent. Goes and does the truck race as well at Bristol for Spire. I think he finished 12th there. All right, first time he's uh, ever been there, ever experienced a truck, not bad. Gets into an Xfinity car, finishes P4. The kid has enough of a record at this point across those three races to be like, all right, we need to find budget for him and see what we can do. And I'm sure that's what they're focusing on over at JRM because he does feel like the next Josh Berry over there. Either way. I'm just really excited for what they're doing, and hopefully we get to see more of it. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.